بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد فقال عز وجل أفحسبتم أن ما خلقناكم عبثا وأنكم إلينا لا ترجعون رب شح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وأهل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي أمين يا رب I want to talk about the two shipwrecks that recently occurred. And these two shipwrecks tell us a lot about the world that we live in. It, it, the, these two shipwrecks tell us a lot about the world we live in. And so the ibra, the lessons, the, uh, the deep thinking, the deep thoughts, that, and, and the results of thinking about these two ship, shipwrecks uh, makes very clear the direction that the world is heading in. And so let's get straight into it. Uh, first of all, you have one uh, sub, like a small submarine that a ticket costs $250,000 to get on the submarine and go see the wreck of the Titanic. Okay? To see the wreckage of the Titanic. There's so much to say about this. But anyway, one of the four people uh is a muslim man from pakistan and his son they had nothing better to do but be on this trip to the wreckage of the titanic like what is wrong with humanity right they could have used this money to do so much good but no they want to seek thrills the thrill and the experience of seeing titanic sink out of all the boats in the world that will sink, this is the one that has hyped up in the media. And now a company called Ocean Gate charges $250,000. Uh, and I tried to go to the website of Ocean Gate, but because the CEO also died, so the website is down right now. Uh, but anyway, $250,000, uh, four billionaires, one of them Pakistani and his son, they go to this wreckage. I mean... Uh, what are they going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When you compare this to the other wreckage, which I'll come to in a second, but it would have been much better to visit the graves of the Muslims or to visit uh, things that would remind you about the reality. So this whole, you know, thrill-seeking thing, Anyway, so this boat that is going to the Titanic, and the result is you ended up being part of the Titanic wreckage. Um, so yes, Titanic tourism is a thing, and it's dangerous. Okay, uh, Only a hand people have seen Titanic's wreckage in per person, because precious few have what it takes to visit. Financial resources, access to experts, a willingness to accept the significant risk safety risk okay uh so in a once in a lifetime experience cost of two hundred fifty thousand dollars per person according to the company's website so that is what they paid and they ended up meeting their fatal death it was written that these people would meet their ajal their time of departure from this world where their ruh and their body would separate in the depths of the ocean, uh, doing the most flivorous, wasteful, useless thing in the world you could possibly do. So, this is what the Fir'auns of the world are doing. The Fir'aun of the world enslave majority of the world so that they can spend their time doing flivorous things, useless things, De demonic things demonic things so that they can spend their time looking at the enslaved humanity so that they can look at the wreckage of the titanic but the story does not end here so on the one side is billionaires we're going to see the titanic these billionaires would never go visit a graveyard these guys would never go and sit by a graveyard for half an hour. These guys would never go to Medina to visit the grave of the Prophet ﷺ or Jannatul Baqi to 
or to any grave of the Muslims to sit and ponder the reality of life. These people would not give 200. They would get angry if somebody was told, asked them, can you give me $250,000? I need to pay off a loan. But they're willing to give $250,000 for a few cheap, few cheap uh, thrills. Okay, so on the one side we have this. And on the other side, we have a boat wreck. I think 700 people have been presumed dead. I'll look at the numbers in a second, or go over the numbers in a second. But 700 people presumed dead, most of them, majority of them, the vast majority of them from Muslim countries, especially Pakistan, but other Muslim countries like Egypt and Tunisia. And what were they doing? They were trying to go from... Uh, from Turkey to Greece so they can find a living, so they can find a place where they can live in safety, where they can live a world or a life of meaningfulness, a life of freedom, a life outside the pharaonic uh, enslavement. And so we have the vast majority of human beings in a state where the, their life is becoming more direly difficult. This is across the world. And people are, the, you know, it, suicide has increased by 25%. The world has been put in a situation where people don't see Allah. They don't experience Allah because they see the world as a place of misery. And they see the world as a place of misery because of these pharaohs. And they see this world as a place of mir because they've, they've been enslaved to the masters, whether it is the, the dynastic families like the Nawashri family or the, uh, the Bhutto family under, under their thumbs. And they don't care about the uh, financial state of the people. The same thing, exactly the same thing with Sisi in Egypt, exactly the same thing with the, the dictators in Tunisia. In, in all the Muslim lands, these people have enslaved the people, and so much so that Muslims then want to find uh, tranquility and life and, uh, and want to grow in a place outside the Muslim lands, outside their homelands. They feel better over there. Whereas the rich and the famous, they, they stay in their countries to rule over the people as slaves while they put their assets and their monies in the banks of Switzerland and in the West and in Western companies and invest in them. And they put all their financial eggs in the West and then use that to enslave the people in their Muslim countries. And so let's just take a look, uh, inshallah. Yes, Titanic tourism is a thing and it's dangerous. While the so-called experts in the world are going to dive to uh, look at the wreckage of the Titanic. Lebanon's currency goes how far down? I'll tell you. Officially pegged at 15,000 Lebanese pounds. Okay, the Lebanese pound for one dollar. That is the situation of the Muslim world right now in Lebanon. Okay, and so, um, and it's actually plunged even more. I think it's 15,500 something right now. So one dollar is 15,500 some Lebanese pound. And does the world care? No. Let's continue. So this is about the five men that were on board. Of course, the CEO and uh, these three billionaires. Uh, uh, Harding was a chairman of Action Aviation. I'm not going to go into much detail. Uh, Shazad Daoud and his son, uh, Stockton Rush, uh, who is the, he was the CEO of this company. So these, these people, they were, they're going through their, uh, thrill experience of seeing the Titanic and met their fate and went back to Allah. Uh, missing Titanic, merciful, catastrophic implosion, likely killed five aboard. Okay. And then, of course, on day four, Titanic, submersible, 
debris found on board presumed dead. Okay. So one of the billionaires posted this on his Facebook. You know, he was excited to go, obviously. So rescue efforts for the missing Titanic sub will probably cost millions. But is it's unlikely that Ocean Gate and its wealthy customers will be expected to foot the bill. You know, it's going to cost millions to get these five billionaires out of there and, and to get the uh, things back from the ship or whatever uh, that is. But uh, those people that died in the hundreds that were poor, no one's going to care about them. No one's going to... Uh, spend millions of dollars for them and the other side of the world is this a boat completely overloaded completely overloaded a boat completely overloaded with human beings they're trying to run away from their misery from the clutches of the pharaoh of that world mostly the muslim world those who uh, the leaders who are in cahoots with the West in creating this situation, but now hundreds. So rescues fanned out the coast of Greece on Thursday after at least 78 people died when finishing a boat, when a fishing boat carrying hundreds of migrants capsized off the southern. Uh, the fishing boat may have been carrying as many as 750 people, of which around 100 were children, according to survivors. Only 104 individuals have been rescued and taken to shelter as of Thursday. Experts say it's unlikely anyone else will be found alive. So how many people are talking about the shipwreck that happened in the Mediterranean versus the quote-unquote Titanic sub? A tale of two disasters, missing Titanic sub captivates the world days after the deadly migrant shipwreck. So where hundreds of people die, no one cares. But the four, four or five billionaires that died, everyone's talking about it. Around 350 Pakistani, the Muslims, were on migrant boat that sank off Greece and still many missing, official says. So we're going to live in this technological world in the future. Great technology, but the haves and have not. The disparity between those who have and those that don't have. Those that can and those who can't. Will, the, the, the gap is going to widen more and more and more. And this is the result of what? This is the re result of democracy. This is the result of humanism. This is the result of secularism. This is the result of modern philosophy. This is the result of uh, Nietzsche's existentialism. This is the result of uh, this secular, godless world that we have now created, where where the few enjoy trivial things, and the majority suffer uh, at the hands of the pharaohs of the world. And so this is really the, a good picture of where the future is going. The, what you see here, these two shipwrecks what you see here is the story of me and you in the future is the story of because there will be very 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 few very few who will be rich and well off and what uh, and will care about the poor very few middle class will be finished middle class will not remain you either make it to the top or you stay at the bottom. And those in the middle will be very few. The majority will be poor. Just a few will be in the middle. And even the fewest on the very top. And so the world has had a large middle class for a long time. Maybe now after World War II, the middle class has grown globally. But what we see in the future is that uh, human misery is going to increase. And it's going to increase partly due to the economic situation, but more accurately because of the maladies of the human heart, because of the hardness of the heart, 
because of the human being, the human-like being. He looks like a human being, but his heart is that of a zombie. His heart is like a beast. His heart is not of a human being. There's no light in it. It's a heart of darkness. And in this time where there is such a clear contrast of lack of nur, no nur, in this time where morality and uh, anything related to morality or our implicit pledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, that light is being dimmed. And so the Muslim world is in dire straits, in very difficult situation. And this is only the beginning. More difficult times are yet ahead. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the reasons for that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to turn to Him. And if we're not going to turn to Him despite the difficult times, then what does that say about the state of our heart? So inshallah ta'ala, I end with reminding everyone of something important. Surah Isra is the surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the Isra wal Mi'raj. And Sultan Isra is the twin surah of Sultan Kahf. And Sultan Kahf is the surah of the end times. And Sultan Isra starts with Subhanallah Asra biham abdihi. Subhanallah, Allah who took his servant up. And Sultan Kahf, Alhamdulillah, Alladhi anzala ala abdihi. Alhamdulillah for the one who took, brought down to his servant. So there's Subhanallah, there Alhamdulillah. There the servant going up, there over there the book coming down. Meaning what? The connection between these two surahs is very strong. And the gift that was given in Isra wal Mi'raj, the surah before Surah Al Kahf, the gift that was given was of the five time prayers. If you add up the five time prayers, the Fajr prayer, two plus four, six, plus Asr, 4, 10, plus Maghrib, 13, plus 4, Isha, 17. Surah Al-Isra is Surah number 17. Surah Al-Kahf is Surah number 18. The point I'm making is, is that instead of wasting your time trying to reach the Titanic and the ruins of Titanic, it would be so much better to spend your time doing things that are meaningful that are useful, like praying seven times, seventeen times, in seven your seventeen rakahs, praying five times a day. There's more meaningfulness in that than the thrill of seeing the Titanic for a few seconds, few minutes, or even few hours, and then it's gone. Over here, you meet the wrecks of Titanic, useless death wreck of the Titanic, and over here, you get to meet Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Did these people go on this submarine and say, I wonder which way the Qibla will be while I'm underwater? Allah knows. But the reality is that human beings have become heedless. And the Fir'auns of the world are making humanity into slaves yet again. And so the days or the, the world, the way it was mapped after World War II, that world is coming to an end. And we're coming into a new world, the result of this democracy. And what Iqbal called the dirty eggs of the West. The dirty eggs of the West now that we see is such that man is more enslaved than even before. Man is more enslaved in some ways than he was even under the colonialism. So anyway, I end here. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولساء المسلمين والمسلمات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته